it can see very close to the black hole horizon. And we can test Einstein gravity against other gravity theories. And amazingly, Einstein wins because of uh, what we see perfectly matches what Einstein predicts in these kind of situations. Uh, this is one thing. And another thing is we can understand that there is a accretion disk around the black hole, which is the disk of matter which is falling into the black hole. And actually there is a jet in the perpendicular direction, very fast, extremely high energy coming out of the black hole. And finally, this technology can be used not only to study black hole physics, because simply we have better resolution in astronomies. And this better resolution can be used in other things, for example, can be used to study galaxy formation and can be used to study the explosion of supernovae, can be considered to uh, study the star formation, etc. And all these questions are related to one very fundamental ultimate question, which is where do we come from? You are asking this question exactly at the right time because there are many directions now are making breakthroughs. One of the directions is gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are ripples of space-time. It's a little hard to imagine. That's a consequence of Einstein's theory of general relativity, that when there are very strong effects happening somewhere, then the space becomes distorted, and the ripples, like wave-like objects, propagate to us. And in the future, Gravitational wave can tell us a lot more about black hole physics. This is because previously, before 2015, all that we know, all that we see in astronomy, they are just coming by electromagnetic waves, in other words, lights. So now we see gravitational waves. Uh, this is like we have two eyes. Previously, we only have one eye, which is light, observable light or different frequencies of light. We only have light to see our universe. But now, we have another eye open, which is gravitational waves. So this opened a completely new era of astronomy. One thing is about black hole pulsar system. What is a pulsar? Pulsar is a special type of a star. Let's say the star is here, and actually it's a neutron star, but the light that emitted by the pulsar is strongly have strong directions. A lot of astronomers are trying to find, trying to search for these systems. And if we find them, what is the implication? The implication is that we have been putting extremely precision measurement device around a black hole. This is one direction that I'm working on related to black holes. Another direction is about wormholes. Wormholes are actually not black holes. What's a wormhole? So imagine if we have galaxies in our universe. Say, if we have one galaxy here and another galaxy here, and to travel from here to here is very far away, like we need billions of years to travel from here to here. So essentially, we cannot travel. However, what if there is a possibility that actually they are not so far away as they look at, uh, they look like. What if there is a shortcut that directly allow us to travel from this galaxy to here using a shortcut? And this shortcut is known as a wormhole. I'm not imagining that in any foreseeable future, we can build some uh, space machine or time machine to travel using wormhole. So this is too distant, but at least it is important to understand if this kind of wormhole can ever exist at all. Is this kind of wormhole allowed by the laws of nature? Fundamental science is a very strong pushing uh, this kind of driving force for technology. We need extremely powerful telescope to see the universe. We need, for example, uh, quantum information. We need extremely uh, uh, well-designed detectors to detect these very weak signals. And uh, particle physics, we need extremely high energies. And in other words, we need extreme conditions to study fundamental science. And that is extremely demanding for technology. I'm doing fundamental science not because I know what can be applied 100 years later, but really, I'm just interested in it. 
I'm interested, I'm sure that a lot of my colleagues doing fundamental science because we are interested in how things work.